What's going on guys? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Hope you and your family are doing well. And in this video, I want to talk about the oral versus the check right. Now, I'm curious, genuinely, which one do you prefer? It's a question I ask frequently. The responses I get vary, but for the most part, I'm going to share with you that most people respond with they prefer the check right. Why? I'm going to venture to say there's two reasons for this. Number one, you're in a familiar environment, meaning you're operating the plane. You're not having to describe how it operates. You're just operating it, which is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis as line pilots. And the other thing is it's scripted. Typical typewriter, or typical PC is going to be two hours to three hours. You're going to have to do an abnormal start. You're going to do steep turn stalls and usual attitudes. You're going to have a V1 cut. If it's a PIC type rating, you're going to have a rejected takeoff. You'll have an evacuation. If it's a newly acquired type, you're going to have to do an engine in-flight relight. I mean, everything is scripted. You know what's coming, and there's only a certain amount of allotted time to do it, so the room for surprises is minimal. Not the case with the oral. On the oral, as you well know, three parts to any oral, memory items, limitations, lights and switches. Let's talk about the lights and switches portion. Typically on the lights and switches portion, we are not operating the plane here. We're describing how the airplane operates, which is perhaps not what we do, certainly if you're not an instructor, you're a line pilot, on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't go out and talk about fire switches and how they operate, or you don't talk about spoilers and which ones deploy and which, one, which hydraulic system uses it. You operate the plane. In other words, if you're giving a, a descent clearance and you need to comply with the descent clearance and you need to expedite the descent, you deploy the speed brake and get down. You don't necessarily think, oh, which, which spoilers am I going to get from which hydraulic system, right? You're in a different environment. So, for the oral, we are describing how the airplane operates. On a check ride, we are demonstrating our proficiency to operate the plane. Now, this, this, this difference between these two scenarios, one is not superior to the other. They're just different, they're unique in their own context and should both be respected. And from an instructor and a line pilot perspective, it should also be respected. Why? Because when you're in the schoolhouse quite a bit like myself or any other instructor, you spend a lot of time in an environment of describing how the airplane operates contrary to the person who's out there flying the line and actually operating the plane. And for this reason, you'll frequently find a line pilot that comes in, can operate the aircraft extraordinarily proficient, very proficient at the practical application, the line flying, but maybe cannot articulate or describe how things operate as well as the instructor who's always in the schoolhouse describing and articulating how the thing operates. Now you have, you have as an instructor, you have to have a, a high level of awareness to understand these two differences so that you can respect them so that when you come in and you ask your, your, your student, hey, what happens when I release the fire switch or pull it in the case of a 7.3? It's the same thing, folks, regardless of airplane, for the most part, the answer is the same. Well, we're going to arm the squibs. We're going to close the hydraulic shutoff valve. We're going to close the fuel pressure valve, the low pressure valve, and we're also going to close the IDG fuel return valve. We're going to deactivate the generator specifically by opening the generator line contactor on a 320 or the generator breaker in a 7.3. We're going to deactivate the FADIC power supply. We're going to close the bleed air valve. That's the answer from a standpoint of Operate, how the airplane operates, describing how it operates, but from a standpoint of operating the plane, to be honest, when I'm directed via ECAM memory item or QRH, right, and I release that fire switch or pull the fire switch, I'm not thinking about deactivating FADEC power supply and which valves close and how the generator line contactor opens. I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm thinking about compliance with the procedure, with the memory item procedure, the QRH, and then I'm on to the next, next steps in this practical scenario of ensuring that my fuel is not imbalanced or leaking. And if it is, that I address that. And that placing that TCAS mode selector to TA so that we prevent climb commands, which can exceed single engine performance capability, which in that moment is more relevant and more priority than me trying to figure out whether the FADEC is active or not active because we deactivated it by the pushing of the fire switch, right? So the worst instructors, folks, I have found are, are those that they, they cannot uh, understand or have the level of awareness that there is describing operation of the plane and operating the plane and that both are unique. They should both be respected. But for someone to come in and not articulate it perfectly to the instructor standard who has the advantage of always being in that wheelhouse in that environment and to think that everyone's going to describe it in that way with that level of proficiency per se, uh, it's a bit unrealistic on the instructor standpoint to believe that. And that being said, let's now flip it vice versa. The best instructors are the ones that are aware of this. They recognize this. Okay? A lot of times folks, and, they, and I have the benefit fortunately of being able to not only teach it but go out and actually fly the 320, go out into the sims right, and, and instruct in the sims. 
But instructors who can articulate very well, if they don't make an intentional effort to not just describe operation, but go operate the plane, or at the very least a sim, they find themselves not as proficient as someone coming in. And so they're each going to have their strengths and their weaknesses. We have to recognize that as both the pilot coming in and also as the instructor. So going back to my instructor uh, you know, point, talking point here, the, the highly aware instructor that recognizes this are often the most effective, right? Because each person is empathetic of where they're coming from. They understand where they're coming from. And then not only that, they can take how the system operates and relate it to practical application to what's most relevant for the pilot out there operating the plane. This connection is huge for the effective data transfer, right? So if I tell a pilot, hey, can you tell me what happens when we pull the fire switch or we release the fire switch? And they tell, you know, maybe they don't say, well, the generator line contactor opens and they just say, oh, it trips the, uh, the generator off. That's fine. To me, that's fine, right? Some instructors get all bent out of shape. Well, what exactly is happening? What do you mean you just tripped the generator off? What, I mean, tell me what exactly is happening, right? Well, A, is it as relevant as they're making it to be relevant? And B, is it as realistic for me to understand it at a level that you do, considering the fact that you're always in a schoolhouse, okay? So that awareness, folks, awareness. So now, most effective instructor. We take this piece right here, and we, and we talk about, hey, we're going to we're going to arm the squibs, we're going to close the hydraulic valve and the fuel valve, and we're going to trip the generator offline. And at the very least, if you, if you understand this at the surface level, we can take this into practical application and we can say, hey man, why, why would you even want to do any of this stuff? Why? Because the why behind things in lessons always helps the retention. Always. So, why am I doing this? Well, because my engine is severely damaged. The only reason I'm pulling a fire switch or, or releasing that fire switch on a 320 is because one of two things is, uh, has occurred. Number one, it's on fire, okay? Or it's severely damaged. Now, if it's severely damaged, that could mean a fan blade flew off, there's internal damage on the engine, maybe it's vibrating. I mean, the best thing we could really honestly do is get rid of the engine entirely, but the fact of the matter is we can't because it's attached. And so what I want to do is isolate it. I want to isolate it as, as best as I possibly can. Now, the way to isolate things in this case is to close valves and deactivate core systems such as the generator, right? And so by pushing this fire switch, it's a one step action, quick action here that isolates all of the primary systems that the engine is tied up with. And so really what I'm doing is trying to isolate. So approach everything on your response from a point of I'm trying to isolate all the engine from all systems that it's tied up with. When you can take how it operates and tie it into practical application so that it is received well by the pilot, so that also, by the way, the level of awareness is recognized that each person has their area of expertise, neither superior, but both unique in their own context and shall be respected, man, you make for such a conducive learning environment. So hey folks, I hope this finds you well. At this point, maybe, you've, uh, maybe you prefer the oral, maybe you prefer the check right, I don't know, but if you have a preference, hopefully this kind of um, brings some light and shed some light on why you prefer one over the other. Of course, as always, got my books up here and other things to announce. Number one, any program that you enroll in for this month of April 2022, uh, you're going to get this ebook free. It's 235 pages, 80 lessons, 35 exercises. Apart from teaching folks in the cockpit and flight school things, I also go to high schools and uh, even colleges and universities and talk about finance mindset and communication strategies. I wrote a, big, uh, a book about this. I have a mentorship about it. Anyway, MunozMission.com is where you can find that slash book. But if you grab any program on One Step Prep this month, April 2022, I'm going to send you the ebook version for this. Type rating playbook to success, whether you're going to get typed on a 3273, 7774, a Gulfstream, a beach jet, doesn't matter what jet you're getting typed on. This is a playbook to basically give you the blueprint on how to go through type rating training, what to expect, uh, maybe some, some roadblocks that you may encounter, some instructor tips. I talk all about it here. 60 pages if you want it. There's a hard cover. There's a, uh, it's actually a soft cover, but a hard version of the book, I should say. An ebook version, a video program, an audio program. It's all available at onestepprep.com forward slash playbook. And finally, got a lot to share with you, brothers and sisters. That's why I'm talking quick, man. So finally, AX3 certification, those of you that are instructors, you want to be an instructor. You want to understand how to take how an airplane operates and transmit the data effectively into the operation of the plane. Basically, you want to become a communicator. I always say communicators take the complex concept and simplify it into something easily digestible. A teacher or an instructor takes something that could be simple and makes it hard, or something that's hard and just transmit it, and it's still hard. They haven't simplified anything, but a connective 
communicator puts the student, the audience, in a position to number one, receive, okay? First, I gotta be receiving. Puts them in a position to receive and then simplifies the complex into bite-sized pieces that keeps them receiving because they're so engaged with you. I wanna describe exactly how we do that. I coined this program AX3. It's the letter A times three, attention, awareness, and accountability. We're gonna unpack all three of these over a two-day period. You can grab that program at AX3 certification. Dot com, more specifically, ax3certification.com forward slash enroll. Hope this video finds you well. Hope you're doing well. Look forward to another video here soon on YouTube. And of course, as always, like, subscribe, share. Drop your comments below. We always read them and get back to them as soon as we possibly can. We'll see you in another video.